It's like you're freeloading here, my brother said, despite the harshness of his words, my sister-in-law sitting quietly beside me. She squinted her eyes and smiled, enjoying my surprised expression as I instinctively glanced over to our mother, with whom I had lived for so long. She said with a sad face, Living with your brother and his wife, who graduated from a prestigious national university and works at a top-tier company, seems better than living with you, Linda. You always stay shut in the house, she said calmly. It seemed neither my mother, sister-in-law, nor brother realized how much I'd contributed to the family's finances and how hard I'd worked for our family. Even with the pain I felt in my heart, I said, Fine, I'll leave. Never ask for my help again and started packing my essential belongings. Watching me, she said sarcastically with a smug smile, bowing out so easily, but no one knows yet who will end up in the more pitiable situation in the future, not recognizing this fact might lead to various problems and challenges. My name is Linda, I've achieved great success in internet-based businesses, and I'm constantly challenged with new things to grow even further. Initially, I had imagined myself working regular hours at a traditional company during my university days. An event I experienced during my second year in college totally changed my life. My father fainted due to illness, and we couldn't do without a caregiver for his daily life. My mother, being rather careless about cooking and cleaning, wasn't great at housework. Thus, she mainly depended on professional caregivers for my father's sudden care needs. But since caregivers weren't there all the time, my mother naturally took on the caregiving role. Even when my father signaled he needed to use the bathroom, she'd tell him to hold it in a little longer, often giving him the cold shoulder. I had to step in to support my father every time this happened. In such circumstances, I began to deeply ponder and question. In the future, when I start working full-time, what will become of my father? Honestly, I couldn't possibly imagine my mother taking care of him entirely. Given this backdrop, I began to explore ways to earn an income without leaving home. During my university years, I studied online business-related knowledge and techniques, utilizing my major in economics. I collaborated with friends well-versed in management and economics to gather information. Further collaborations with IT-savvy friends from other faculties kick-started our online business project. Indeed, we have a comfortable and beautiful working office. However, that office is primarily used as a specific space for staff who find it challenging to concentrate while working from home, and for new employees needing orientation or training. Personally, I hardly ever visit that office. My primary workspace is a room at home where I can spend time with my father. I carry out most of my tasks there. One day, my father, curious about my work arrangement, asked, Did you give up on a full-time position for me? Or was it challenging for you to secure a position as a fresh graduate? Feeling sorry about it, holding back tears, I thoroughly explained the online business I've been building since college. The business remains stable and continues to expand, and there are no issues working from home. Upon hearing this, my father said, Linda, you've truly grown into a responsible adult. It's a far cry from town. He expressed genuine gratitude from his heart. Actually, I am the only one in charge of supporting my father's daily life. The truth is, I'm not an only child. I have an elder brother named Tom, who is two years older than me. He tends to be selfish and rarely puts others' needs first. In reality, Tom excelled academically and showcased his talent from his student days. After graduating from a prestigious national university, he leveraged his talents and smoothly secured a position in a top-tier company. When our family received the news of his employment, we were taken aback but simultaneously wanted to acknowledge and celebrate his achievements. Thus, my father, mother, and I all tried to contact him to convey our blessings. However, his response was contrary to our expectations. I will start a new life in the city and will never return to that countryside. I want you to believe I'm doing well on this new way. With that, he ended the call so suddenly. Ever since that day, we couldn't contact him at all. His lines of communication were unilaterally cut off, and all our messages and calls were ignored. 
Although Tom had received ample financial support from father for his college education and independent living, he never showed any gratitude and distanced himself from us. In this situation, both I and father felt repeated shock and disappointment. Amidst this, a hypothesis emerged among us. We wondered if mother was secretly communicating with Tom. However, despite father's deteriorating health and the essential daily care he needed, the absence of any contact from Tom made it clear that he didn't think of fulfilling his responsibilities or roles as a family member. After going through this, one day, an unexpected report came to us from Mom. Recently, I got a call from Tom. It seems he's met a woman he's considering marrying. He asked if we could give them a wedding gift. I'm thinking of preparing around $99,000 as a heartfelt gift. Do you think both of you can help with this? Conveying this to father and me with a slightly nervous expression, considering our financial situation, mother spends most of her days at home except for the three days she works part-time. The salary she earns usually goes to lunches and shopping with her friends, so she hardly saves any money. I couldn't hide my surprise at mom's intention to request such a large amount for Tom, with whom we hadn't been in contact for so long. Feeling anger, but listening calmly at first, his face then turned red. Why? He can do this? He hasn't contacted us since he left home, and now he suddenly asks for such a large sum for his wedding. I can't understand it, and there's no way I'm going to agree to it. Raising his voice in anger at mother, who looked a bit displeased and gazed at me with a troubled expression. But think about it. Tom has decided to get married. I genuinely wish for him to get married and bring grandchildren, more than for you, Linda, who stays at home and doesn't connect with the outside world. It's a parent's feelings. Please understand that, she calmly retorted. The primary reason I didn't work in a regular employment manner was largely influenced by mother. So, I couldn't understand how mother could say such things to me. Father also couldn't hide his anger at mother's words. Because you didn't help me properly with my care, Linda is really concerned about my health and stays home for me. I've given a lot of financial support to Tom over the years, but I've never heard a word of gratitude from him. How can one even think of demanding a large celebration gift for someone like him? That day, the house echoed with loud arguments between my father and mother. From the next room, I listened to my mother's accusations, being concerned about my father's health. It was true that my mother always favored my brother, especially praising his academic and other talents. She neither appreciated nor understood my decision to choose a house out of concern for my father's health. This fact deeply saddened me. Eventually, mother decided to go out to dine, needing a change of scene, and temporarily left the house. After she left, my father said to me, Linda, thank you for being by my side, even in teams like this. It's okay, Dad. I've known since I was a child how Mom has always favored Tom. I'm fine. I've made you overcome so many challenges every day. I just ask you for care, and it pains me that I can't actually be of help to you, Dad, I replied. That's not true. You've allowed me to pursue higher education and have always encouraged me with warm words for my efforts and endeavors. If you weren't by my side, I might not have even considered venturing into online business as I do now. My father's face lightened up, and a small smile brought me relief. On the other hand, I couldn't understand why my mother, having a father who's always understanding and caring for children, continues with her self-centered behavior. And as for my brother, avoiding communication with the family for years and suddenly demanding a wedding gift is questionable in terms of family ties. But the most shocking event for me occurred shortly after. It was the sudden news of my father's passing one quiet morning. Amidst a usual routine, I found he wasn't moving. As time felt frozen, I called an ambulance, but it was already too late. He had passed away. His friendly nature and warm-heartedness were evident from the many people who flocked to his wake. Ordinarily, during a funeral, the wife is expected to make arrangements. But I'm very busy right now, Linda. I'm entrusting all funeral arrangements to you, she said, frequently checking her phone with a concerned look. I couldn't sense a bit of support or cooperation from her. I don't know what she was engrossed in. Although I felt anger, 
I was determined to concentrate on preparing for the wake and funeral to send my father off properly. Then, a surprising event unfolded. A while after the funeral began, my brother entered the venue hand in hand with a woman dressed in a flashy pink dress. What's more, he was casually dressed in a hoodie, clearly in a propriety for this solemn occasion. As all the attendees look it on in shock, only our mother approached my brother with a bright smile. I'm glad you came, Tom. Now, your father's inheritance will be ours, my mother boldly declared. The atmosphere in the hall changed completely after my mother's sudden statement. All eyes were on my mother and brother, and the venue was filled with collective surprise and bewilderment. Honestly, for Linda, who has been at home for a long time taking great care of Dad, I don't think she should expect any inheritance, he declared loudly. There seemed to be a hint of sarcasm in his words. I was surprised by his words and let out a deep sigh. I figured he must have been informed about the household situation and our father's health by our mother. However, she seemed oblivious to the fact that I had contributed a lot to the household, finances, or whether there truly was any considerable inheritance from our father, who once required care. Neither mother nor Tom seemed to understand the reality or appreciate my efforts. It's true that Dad once held a senior position and was rumored to have had a good income but making such inappropriate remarks at a funeral was undeniably disrespectful. This funeral feels somewhat gloomy and oppressive. By the way, Tom, even though receiving the inheritance might be in the distant future, should we leave now? After all, we'd get the inheritance even without attending this funeral, she said, pulling on Tom's arm. The moment I saw this woman, presumably my brother's new wife, I was convinced she was his wife. She seemed to have a vibe similar to Tom's. I thought she probably has a personality much like him to marry someone like him. I think I wish they'd leave as soon as possible, I muttered quite unexpectedly. It seemed as though even our mother was in agreement with them. Shall we go eat sushi? Saying that, the three of them left the venue. The other relatives were also surprised by this turn of events. Some raised their voices in shock, but I suggested for our father, let's at least keep our composure. I suppressed my inner irritation and continued with the funeral proceedings. However, upon returning home, there was another surprise. On the dining table were three boxes of sushi, presumably ordered for delivery. The table was messy, with nothing cleared away. From the living room came voices and laughter. There were Mother, Tom, and his wife, Jessica, clearly enjoying themselves and drinking. Ah, you're late, Linda. Can you make some snacks, whatever you're good at making? And can you buy some more alcohol? Can you buy... That would be so helpful, little sis. I was utterly shocked by these unexpected words from my brother and his wife. Seeing such insensitivity during our father's final rites and their apparent lack of regret or understanding was mind-boggling. Despite the tense atmosphere and the shocked expressions of other relatives, it seemed they didn't think they were doing anything wrong. Seeing my mother, who should be the one to correct such behavior, casually joining in their merriment made me feel it was right to have stayed. I wonder what would have happened had I not been there. Would they have even held a proper funeral? In this situation, I told them, there's no inheritance you're hoping for. There was no way I was going to comply with their request such like more drinks or snacks. I had no reason to obey them after that. A drunken Tom suddenly looked upset and said, What are you talking about, Linda? You've always stayed at home doing nothing, causing trouble to our father. So now, it is natural that we use our father's assets, considering that Tom relied on our father for all his college living and tuition expenses, I couldn't understand his basis for such claims. I was both exasperated and headachy, seeing him act like he owed our father nothing. By the way, this house was built by our dad, right? Normally, as the eldest son, it would be natural for Tom to inherit it. So why, Linda, who stays at home all day and does nothing living here? With those words, both mother and brother seemed to nod in agreement. The warmth that used to be in my mother's eyes for me was no longer there. To be honest, that's correct. 
This house is mine. I'd like the parasite living here to leave soon. After my brother's stern words, there was no guilt on the smiling face of my sister next to him. My mother, with whom I'd lived for many years, began to speak. To be honest, I feel more comfortable living with my son and his wife, who graduated from a top university and succeeded in society, than with you, Linda. It seemed they hadn't noticed at all how much I had contributed to this house over the years. I felt sadness and disappointment. I let out a deep sigh and decided to express my feelings. Understood. I will leave here. Please don't ask anything of me from now on. I backed to my room and began to pack my things. Just then, I heard my sister mocking voice. She is really poor, don't you think so? Seeing the three of them, my brother, his wife, I'm and my mother laughing at me, I bitterly smiled in my mind. Yes, in the current situation, I might seem the most miserable, but there's something I'd like them to know. The truth is, I've owned this house since my father was still alive. He entrusted it to me, and I accepted. Therefore, even before my father passed away, this house was legally registered in my name. However, my mother still lives in this house. She spent a long time here. Even if I informed her of the current situation, she'd likely say, I've spent most of my life here and wouldn't leave easily. Considering this situation, I've been seriously thinking about what to do with the house, especially after seeing my mother's cold behavior during my father's funeral. My thought became stronger. I felt like tired of my relationship with her and started to feel her presence as a burden. I thought it'd be lonely living alone in this big house, and maintaining it would also be challenging. So, I decided to sell it. Seeing my mother and brother's family unaware of my decision, and seemingly enjoying my situation, I couldn't help but feel pity. Their attitude, expecting some inheritance that my father supposedly had, seems rather ridiculous to me. My mother, during her healthier days, did have a stable income. However, since she became unable to work due to health issues, her income stopped, and she had to use her carefully saved savings to hire a helper for daily assistance. It's true that my mother withdrew money from her savings for daily expenses. However, even after my father fell ill and had some problems in everyday life, my mother strived to maintain her unchanged lifestyle. As a result, her savings gradually decreased. When I noticed that my father's savings had been completely depleted, I decided to contribute $3,000 every month to support the household. Though my mother took care of housework, she was not good at managing household finances. When shopping at the supermarket, she often made impulsive purchases, buying expensive items more than necessary. Seasonal sales and budgeting strategies didn't seem to be significant factors for her. Moreover, she tended to use the money she earned from her part-time job for her hobbies and leisure. Additionally, she withdrew more money from her daily expenses for her enjoyment, making it hard to comprehend her financial decisions. My father often said to me, I'm sorry, the money savings by my father were ultimately used by my mother. When I finally decided to leave the house, I withdrew all the remaining balance from the account I had been supplying for household expenses. I couldn't imagine letting my mother use this money anymore. And so, the events of the day after I made up my mind to leave the house began. Linda, did you take the household funds? It's the important money for our living. I was suddenly interrupted by my mother's voice over the phone during a quiet morning. I could sense a mix of surprise and blame in her tone. Mom, which household funds are you talking about? The savings your father built up over the years? When I checked, every account was empty, I questioned. Isn't it because you used up all those savings, Mom? What are you talking about? Are you surprised? I've left the household ledger on the living room table. In it, there's a record of you making withdrawals frequently, using Dad's cherished savings. Not just me but Dad knew about it too. And after those savings were gone, I was the one financially supporting the house with $3,000 every month. From the other end of the phone, I heard my mother's footsteps rushing around, possibly searching for the ledger I mentioned. After that, the sound of the living room door opening, and then, 
Hey, Mom, what's happening? Weren't we supposed to inherit the estate after Dad passed away? Did you use it all up? Anger and disappointment were evident in my brother's voice. I could also hear his wife's voice in the background. It's unbelievable what you've done, Mother. Did you really call us from our hometown, relying on our financial support? That's really cold. No, I didn't mean it like that. It was clear that Mother had invited my brother and his wife here because of the inheritance. Given this truth, I felt deep down they would no longer trust her words. We moved here, leaving stable jobs, expecting to receive the inheritance Dad was supposed to leave us. How are we supposed to live now? What, Tom? I had no idea you made such a big decision. This was completely new information to me as well. My brother used to have a respectable job at a major corporation. But I didn't care about their decision because it's not directly impacting my life, so I wasn't deeply concerned. Also, this monthly amount of about $2,700. Upon checking the bank book, I found that Linda has been transferring it regularly. But Mom, you kept saying Linda wasn't working, right? At my brother's words, Mother suddenly remembered our phone conversations and looked at me with a face full of shock and guilt. What? What's going on, Linda? Smiling slightly, I responded, You should look into something called remote work. These days, you can have a formal job without leaving home. I never told my family about the considerable success I had with my online business. It was clear to me that if they knew, my brother, his family, and even my mother would start relying on me. Worse, they might interfere with my business in some way. Please come back. Let our family spend time together again. Mom's voice had become very small, as if she had never blamed me at all. But I have completely no idea of returning to that house. Mom, you just want to rely on my money, aren't you? By the way, about the house... While Dad was alive, considering the property tax payments, I took over the house and changed the ownership. It's now mine. I don't plan to live there anymore, so I asked a trusted real estate agent to sell it. That agent is actually run by my uncle. He was quite angry about the incident at the last funeral, so if my brother and his family stay in the house, he'll surely kick them out. I never imagined it would come to this, losing our home. Along with my mother's astonished voice, I could hear my brother's voice from the other end of the phone. What happened now? I felt too bothered to answer my brother's question. I had decided to leave everything up to Uncle regarding the future. If things were going well, Uncle would be on his way to meet my mother and my brother's family by now. He promised to handle and explain everything on my behalf, so I was at ease. Goodbye. I intend to sever ties with you and Mom. I won't be using this phone anymore. Farewell. After conveying that, I ended the call, imagining their astonishment. I felt a fleeting little sadness. It would be hard for them to find me. This is because I have plans to relocate abroad, a plan kept secret even from my father. I had always dreamt of living overseas. I was particularly drawn to the warmth of tropical countries and their multicultural settings. After my father passed away, when my mother and my brother's family told me to leave the house, I felt it was the perfect opportunity to realize my dream. I immediately began packing and started to look for a residence abroad. I was keen on finding a quiet place near the beach and devoted myself to house hunting. Currently, I am living alone in a short-term rental apartment. It's close to the city center with good transportation links, making it ideal for preparing for my move abroad. With the sudden eviction from the house, my brother and his family, along with my mother, are likely too preoccupied searching for a new place to bother about me. A little while later, when I heard that my brother, his wife, and my mother had started living together in a cramped apartment and were taking up part-time jobs to make ends meet, I had already started my new life abroad. According to information from my uncle, he had hired a particular detective agency to discreetly monitor the living conditions of my brother's family and mother. The three of them had moved into an old apartment in the city and began looking for short-term jobs. However, trying to maintain their previous lifestyle, they continued to spend beyond their means, living their daily lives without any notion of saving. 
As a result, my uncle heard from the detective that there were rumors they were borrowing money from potentially high-risk lenders. If things continue like this, they might face even more challenging situations with debt collectors. Given the past events and my decision to sever ties with them, I've avoided any further involvement, and it's unlikely I'll ever see them again.